Good morning, everyone. We continue recognizing American Education Week with analyst Derek Johnson. He recently did some analysis regarding K-12 virtual learning. How does the landscape look and what are the market drivers for virtual learning? Yeah, so I'll talk about uh, one in particular, which is uh, overcrowding. Um, uh, just to give you some background, according to the Department, uh, the U.S. Department of Education, uh, total public school enrollment is uh, near or at 50 million right now, and that number is uh, projected to rise by about 2 million by 2019. Now, conversely, on the teacher side, the total public uh, school teacher workforce uh, in the country right now is just over 3 million, uh, and a lot of school districts are expected to hire about another half million uh, by 2019. So if you look at just the overall uh, student to teacher ratio in the country right now, uh, we're at about one public school teacher for every 15 public schools, uh, for every, uh, excuse me, for every 16 or 17 public school students. Um, and by 2019, if those projections do hold, uh, then we're going to be at about one public school teacher for every 15 public school students, which, um, you know, on the surface, that looks great. Uh, that is in line with uh, a lot of uh, uh, guidelines um, for, for uh, good class sizes and, and good te teacher to student ratios. Um, when you look a little bit deeper into the numbers, you do see that uh, two thirds of uh, that workforce is, uh, is dedicated towards teaching uh, pre-K through uh, eighth grade. Um, and those classrooms tend to have much uh, more stringent requirements when it comes to teacher to student ratios. It's usually around one to eight or one to 10 so, you know, again, it, it looks great, um, I think, on the surface, uh, and it looks like there's no problems, but uh, once you do tease those numbers out a little bit more, I think you do, see, um, uh, you do see a different picture. Where in the state and local market is this problem most pronounced? Well, uh, I'll give you just a couple of examples. Um, in New York City, for example, uh, half of the uh, classrooms uh, have class sizes that are above the number specified in union contracts. I think there's clearly uh, an overcrowding problem there. Um, over on the West Coast uh, in California, according to a uh, UCLA report, uh, one in three Californian uh, students uh, attend an overcrowded school. Um, I think that virtual and distance learning uh, tools are, are a, represent a fantastic opportunity to address some of these overcrowding issues. Um, unfortunately for uh, education IT vendors, uh, most school districts still tend to see uh, the solution to uh, that problem in traditional uh, terms, you know, we need more buildings, we need more equipment, we need more teachers, uh, we need more supplies. Um, they have not yet uh, latched on to, I think, uh, the idea on a, on a large scale uh, that these problems can be addressed uh, through technology, through online learning, through virtual learning uh, education tools. Um, I think that sort of regardless of how far we've come uh, in the last 15 to 20 years with uh, learning management systems and, and electronic teaching tools, uh, there's still uh, very much a stigma uh, among parents uh, when it comes to uh, e-learning. Um, I think parents are still for the most part wary uh, of removing their children from that brick and mortar uh, traditional uh, public school system that uh, they grew up in and that we all kind of grew up in. That being said, I think uh, a lot, not, not all, but, uh, but a lot of the uh, fears that were associated with virtual learning uh, have turned out to be unfounded, uh, you know, especially as uh, the technology has evolved, as it has become more sophisticated, uh, and as we have learned uh, how to integrate it uh, more smoothly into uh, the, the, the regular curriculum um, for a lot of schools. Um, I think that what we have found is that uh, a lot of the top priorities that are mentioned um, by governors when they talk about uh, primary, uh, second, and secondary education measures, um, virtual learning really took a backseat uh, in a significant way to initiatives like uh, workforce investment and school choice. Um, so there, I think that there's still sort of a substantial amount of work that needs to be done both culturally and politically uh, to lay the groundwork um, for uh, an environment where there's more widespread acceptance of, uh, of virtual learning tools. What are the key takeaways from this report and what is the potential of this technology in the future? Well, we're making progress. Um, you know, according to a 2011 study by uh, Picciano and Seaman, about 5 million students by 2016 will be utilizing online uh, courses. Uh, right now, there are 30 states uh, that have multiple school districts with full-time online schools, uh, and there are 40 states that have either a statewide or a state-led uh, virtual school in place right now. So, you know, I do think that we are making progress. Um, and that we are on a path uh, towards increasing the share of virtual learning in our public schools. 
Um, and, and if you just look at the variables that are driving it, as well as um, just the, the need for schools uh, to adapt uh, their curriculums to 21st century technology, uh, those are really trends that um, we see only intensifying as time goes on. Um, now, this is in a comparative sense. Um, the, the overall market for virtual learning is, is still relatively small. Um, and as I said, there are a lot of cultural and political obstacles that will need to be hurdled uh, before a sort of a full-on embrace of those technologies um, can take place uh, with school districts. Um, right now, the biggest virtual learning uh, needs uh, that state and local governments have uh, is that traditional IT equipment, uh, you know, computers, laptops, uh, mobile and smartphone technology, um, followed by learning management systems at the, uh, the secondary and higher education levels. Um, it's definitely a growing market, um, but you know, like I said, comparatively in terms of both scope uh, and timeline, you know, we do think that it is still a ways off uh, before it becomes a, a real force in state and local uh, education procurement. Thanks so much for your insight, Derek. Stay tuned tomorrow as we speak with analyst Randy Powell regarding some analysis she recently did around education data systems.